Hello everybody and welcome back for another episode of Indie Impressions. My name is Nick and today we're going to be checking out something called Among Ripples by developer Eat Create Sleep. Uh, this is a life management style sim where we're given a pond with a little ecosystem and kind of just let free to do what we please with it from there. And I kind of think that's one of the magical, wonderful things about games like this. And you don't generally find me covering too many strategy games on this channel, but I, I do kind of group uh, life management and strategy in the same sort of genre. But this is the one thing I can get behind. Behind, uh, because there's actually, hopefully anyway, uh, some consequences, some open interpretation of things that we might be able to understand, maybe a little adaptation of some science concepts or something like that. And uh, I'm totally into that stuff. So let's look at the credits real quick before we start up. I'll do the tutorial for you guys because actually probably necessary in this particular case. And then we'll see about uh, managing our own little pond, see what happens. So there are credits. Is everybody responsible? Let me start up the tutorial here. All right. So the lake and its inhabitants used to take care of themselves. Things change, it's now up to you. Click anywhere to continue. I have enabled uh, the projector to grab the mouse, by the way. Uh, so it will be on screen. Hopefully nobody finds that too annoying, but I figure for games like this where it's really the only uh, avenue that you can tell that I'm interacting with it is the mouse, I think it makes more sense to have it than not have it. All right, so start off by spawning a couple of dace fish. Uh, click on the dace spawning grounds in the middle of the lake bed. All right, so we've got this big yellow cloud here where the fish are spawning. Let's get these guys going. Got a couple little fishies. Very nice. There's a limit to how many creatures you can spawn right away. If you reach the limit, you need to wait for them to either grow or die to spawn more. Okay, fair enough. I don't know if that's right away as in, like, as of this tutorial or in perpetuity. Uh, maybe things will change as we get on further. Now let's spawn a few perch fish. Click their spawning grounds on the left side of the lake. Thankfully, they're blinking for me because I don't know how to tell which things the perch prefer. Uh, whether they like the little sort of uh, happy frond on the right side or the, the grassy fronds on the left side of the log down there. Okay, so we can adjust the level of oxygen in the water by clicking and dragging to the left or right. Oxygen affects algae growth and the creatures uh, differently. Try this out. So we'll have a little bit of a click and drag here. So there we go. You can see the bubbles get to be completely transparent or if I drag them to the left, much, much more opaque. Uh, there are toxic substances contaminating the lake. Try spawning some clams by clicking their... Uh, spawning grounds on the bottom right of the lake. So we'll set the oxygen to like somewhere in the middle for now. And we've got some clams going. Got a little clam bake at the bottom there. I, I hope they help. Oh, they're, I guess they're absorbing pollution and growing larger. Now let's add some crayfish. Spawn these by clicking the log at the bottom left. Uh, who doesn't love a good crayfish? Let them loose. Look at those happy little things. All right, we may also add pike. Uh, their spawning ground is located on the right side of the lake. Click to spawn a pike. Okay, well, we'll get two or three of these guys out. And hopefully the uh, ecosystem will be fairly balanced. Finally, we have the otter. Of course, the otter uh, can be spawned by clicking the reed in the upper left corner of the screen. Do this now. Very nice. Let's spawn an otter. Oh, look how nice he is. Everybody loves a good otter, right? It's pretty much the, the superstar of the aquarium most of the time. Uh, if you wish to quit the game, uh, click the upper right corner and wait for the menu button to appear, then click it again and return the menu, click anywhere to continue. So we can actually just kind of like keep our lake going uh, right from here if we choose. Now completed the tutorial and we can stay here or we cannot stay here. Looks like the otter is wrecking some of these fish for some reason. I guess uh, when he eats them, he just kills them and they fall to the bottom of the lake bed or something like that. Uh, I guess we'll... We'll go back to the menu and see what's different if we actually start the proper game. It has a really nice uh, sense of art to this game, by the way. I really enjoy the atmosphere of it. It's got just sort of like soft, warm uh, vibes about it. The soundtrack certainly helps, as well as the watercolor style uh, backdrop, which apparently there are actually discrete seasons to this. So let's kind of start this process over again, and we'll see if we can start out our own... Okay, so as soon as I put all these fish in, we've got what looks to be some pollution here. Do I have to follow the same spawning scheme as the tutorial that would be a little strange if i did all right so we got the clams going we'll lower the oxygen just a little bit get the otter in what's on the right there's some reeds on the top right corner i don't see them doing much of anything though and the crayfish are alive what's this above the clam there looks to be a little bit of a picture is it spawning a new clam maybe maybe that's the clam reproducing but one of the things I really like about games of this style is they really let you free to uh, just sort of imagine what the developer was thinking as far as how this inc uh, ecosystem is all going to sync up together. I mean, we've got all of these kind of disparate puzzle pieces forming up. We've got all these fish that I particularly don't know much about. 
You know, why do we have the uh, the perch, and what do they affect to the? What does the otter have to do with that? What do the crayfish have to do with the pollution? What do the oysters have? Well, I mean, if you know a little bit, or the clams rather, a little bit about the way this all works, I guess you could come out to some more informed decisions, and I think that's kind of a neat thing. Uh, it sort of levels the playing field a little bit in that there's some level of actual science involved, right? Or at least that's the hope anyway. And I'm sure people that have like a background in marine biology are going to look at this and say, well, X and Y is wrong. And well, you know, that's nice that we can nitpick sometimes, but also as long as it's based in some semblance of reality, I think that's at least enough. Uh, because again, it is a video game and there can always be a little bit of an embellishment. Uh, but I'm sort of, I'm praising it and taking away from it at the same time. I like it, and I also think that it's cool that we can go in either direction with it. Uh, you take something that's based in reality and also add a little bit of a level of fiction to it. That's always fun, right? Uh, and I guess you could get really crazy with something like this. So look at frog fractions. We end up at the beginning with a, a happy pond, and all of a sudden later on we're, you know, diving and doing math and on Mars. And like, I mean, that's not what this is all about. This is definitely much more of a simulatory experience. But I do like when uh, players, or, or developers rather, can mess with the players' preconceptions about things. And right now, uh, I'm super set up for a Frog Fractions thing. That could definitely happen. And if it did, it would take me super off guard. So the otter looks like he's kind of tooling around, checking out the other fish. I see him... Oh, he just ate that one right there, and it's going to fall down to the ground. Uh, where presumably, the bottom feeders are going to get a hold of it. Although I don't see them flocking over there. Oh wait, the crayfish maybe? Let's get some more clams involved, because I see maybe the pollution levels are rising just a little bit. And we'll spawn some more of these little guys. So presumably whatever I overpopulate will sort of cull out the rest of the other populations and could inevitably create the downfall of my pond. So I don't know if there's really any particular goal, but I do know that uh, there is actually an ending or two that you can get in this. And that is sort of an important element to take into consideration, uh, whether or not the developer chooses to wrap something up like this with a bow or not. Uh, can we get another these guys in? No, they don't seem to want to spawn more than one, so I guess these guys are kind of like hyper predators. Uh, and he's just kind of doing his thing. Alright, can we get maybe a few more? What if we just go nuts with this? Oh yeah, eventually it stops letting me spawn anymore, so there is a limit. And it's fun to kind of test the limits of what your eco ecosystem can bear, right? So you take all of one fish and let them go nuts, uh, see if that kills off everything else, to see what degree uh, you can play with the boundaries of everything. And this is definitely a very soothing experience. I could see playing this over a long period of time, sort of like that game Mountain. Uh, let this be your, you know, pond simulator for a long-term scenario. And it'd be kind of neat if there were other elements that maybe get introduced over the long period of time, too. I'm not sure maybe there are, actually, because we do uh, have different seasons that'll happen. So maybe that'll affect some of the way the population works. Or maybe there's even going to be new things that enter the scenario. Maybe a bear will come by and eat a few of these fish out of the pond or... Who knows what else, although I don't know if bear really like to hang out by ponds. Maybe they do. Would also be kind of neat if you could actually control like a larger population of the world or of a certain area or region. Uh, maybe this is just one ecosystem that you start, and then you also start a few more in other areas close to this. And then sort of watch as that transforms the landscape of the pile, uh, population of wildlife around the ponds. Uh, so you could see how you could affect the course and trajectory of life forms on the ground indirectly through the life forms in the water. I mean, I know that's a super ambitious thing to expect a developer to implement, but it would be kind of a neat thing to see in the larger scale. Maybe like a civilization of, you know, marine biology. Oh, it looks like the climate has changed a little bit. It looks like we've got a little bit of snowfall here and maybe at the top of the water things are starting to freeze over a little bit. Is the otter happy underwater in that? I don't know how they, they live through the freezing winters. I guess their oily fur is enough to get them through some harsh colds. I know they do prefer some cold water, but I don't know a ton about marine biology, honestly, I must admit. So it looks like things are kind of just going along at their reasonably happy pace. And that's another thing that the game uh, does mention, or the developers mention in the download area, uh, that there is just sort of like a, you know, relax and take it at your own pace kind of gameplay. Uh, is that pollution down there? Maybe we need a few more clams to even things out. And it's a difficult temptation, right? Because you want to give the player direct and quick feedback when you look at something like this. You want them to be able to see changes in how they affect things directly in a very fast manner. But at the same time, you also want to let there be some long-term scaling to things, too. And I feel kind of like 
what's the the punishment here, right? I know there's supposed to be some con uh, consequences based on my actions, but it kind of feels like, well, if I get into trouble, I'll just spawn more of whatever I want more of, right? There's not really a limit, and it doesn't feel like any one particular element of the population is taking complete control over anything. So, I don't know if that's just the way I'm playing it, or maybe that's just the way the game encourages play to happen, but it just seems like it's playing out that way regardless. Man, this guy over here is massive. This is like as big as the otter. I don't know what's going on with that. So, uh, yeah, it seems like we're just gonna keep on spawning more little fish as we now change back to spring. I'm kind of wondering if uh, there's anything that's going to change. I'm starting to hope that we can see some of these consequences of what could happen. I don't see, like, you know, the, the spawning ground of one of the types of creatures has stopped allowing me to create more creatures. If that was the case, well, I guess that's about as serious as things get. But whenever I see the, the uh, pollution pop up, I just add a few more clams, and it seems to just be the way it goes. I could try adding less oxygen and see if that changes anything. Uh, looks like the clams might be flourishing, or no, the spawning bed of the guys in the middle here isn't quite as big. Yeah, the clams are doing well, they all seem to be repopulating. Uh, the otter has left the pond, oh, so I guess they go from the left to the right there, and if I spin this back up again, will the otter come back? Well, I guess I could just spawn another one. I guess that one wasn't happy with the amount of oxygenation in the water, so maybe it wasn't getting the fish it wanted, and decided to leave. I'd kind of love to be able to track that otter and follow it to another area, but I guess that's not how things are going to work. I'm just kind of getting lost in the soundtrack. It's just very soothing uh, as we just kind of take in the colors and the background and everything. It would be nice if there was maybe a little bit more dynamic going on. The, uh, even just having a layer of like subtle animation in the background, occasionally have a bird pop by and land on something, maybe have the fronds move a little bit in the wind, the surface of the pond could also shimmer a little bit or have some sort of shake to it. But, you know, I also appreciate that uh, for what it is, there's quite a bit of complex AI hopefully going on in the background. At least that's uh, the, the hope from what I can tell uh, from the claims in the bullet points. Although I can't say from the gameplay, I've seen a lot of super complex behavior. It kind of seems like things are just kind of bouncing off of each other and whenever they die, I just add more of them. Uh, but I'd be very curious to hear what your opinions are with something like this. If you found uh, any particular consequences or something that really has made a huge difference in your pond's life scale, uh, feel free to comment that. And in general, what do you think about these sort of lifestyle sim type games? I I've always been hoping for something sort of like a spore style game, uh, but done a little bit more with, uh, you know, I guess some more grandiose implications. Uh, not that Spore didn't have extremely ambitious roots, it's just, you know, as I'm sure many of you have seen, it didn't really come to fruition the way a lot of us had hoped. So, not that I'm saying this is really on the same scale as that or anything, just I'm really into that concept. I want to see more games with, you know, evolutionary basis, have things uh, model long-term scopes and scales of life forms, and, you know, I like where the, the game's head is at for uh, Among Ripples. But yeah, that's going to be about it for today's episode. I am glad to be able to show you something like this. Feel free to go download it for yourself. There is a, a Windows, Linux, and OS X, as well as an Android version of this, so you can get it for pretty much anything you want. Uh, give it a try. Let me know in the comments what you think about it, and be sure to come back again tomorrow. Because new episodes of Indie Impressions go up every single day. So I hope you enjoyed the episode, and if you did, consider leaving a like on it, because that helps me out a whole bunch. And I look forward to bringing you another one tomorrow, so I'll see you all very, very soon. Catch you later, everybody.